Hello, LumaTouch fans. In this video, I'm going to unpack what just might be the most powerful storytelling tool in LumaFusion. The enhanced magnetic timeline combines traditional track-based editing with the best parts of a magnetic timeline. The main track is your anchor track. It's the first track you see on the timeline when you start a new project. And the main track is the only track that allows you to switch between insert and overwrite modes. The tracks above and below the main track are always in overwrite mode. By default, clips on these tracks are automatically linked to the clip above or below on the main track, so that they maintain their sync as you move things around on the main track. We'll get into more of that in a bit. Then we have the track header. This panel contains tools that affect an entire track, and not just a single clip or the whole project. Insert mode is the default mode of a new project. You'll know you're in insert mode when the arrow button on the main track is white and pointing to the right. You'll also see the main track of the timeline will be highlighted in gray. When you're in insert mode, clips on the main track ripple. They move out of the way to make room for new clips when you're adding clips or trimming clips on the main track. To insert a clip between two others, Drag a clip to the timeline and hover it near a cut until you see the yellow insert symbol. Then drop the clip. Gaps are closed when removing clips from the timeline. With a clip selected, you can do this either by tapping the trash can button or you can just drag the clip up and off the timeline. If you'd rather work in overwrite mode, you can toggle this on at any time. You'll know you're in overwrite mode when the arrow button on the main track is yellow and pointed down. You'll also see a purple highlight on the main track of the timeline. When you work in overwrite, things you do on the main track, like adding a clip from the library, or trimming a clip on the timeline, will not impact the position of other clips on the timeline. This is great if you're working on something like a music video or a commercial, where keeping to a particular duration is important. To overwrite a clip, select and drag a clip to the timeline and hover it over another clip until you see this white box, which is the overwrite symbol. Drop the clip, and the portion of that clip under the white box will be overwritten. The new clip will just replace that bit. When you remove something from the timeline, you'll leave a gap. When deleting a clip, or trimming a clip shorter. When you return to insert mode, these gaps will be converted into blank clips that can be trimmed, replaced, or removed altogether. If you take the time to learn it, switching between insert and overwrite modes becomes second nature over time. Don't be afraid to experiment with the two modes during your edits. We mentioned replacing clips earlier, let's dig into this a bit more. Sometimes you want to replace a clip on the timeline with a new clip without removing it first. You can use replace mode by dragging a clip from the library or from another position on the timeline. In this example, we're dragging from the library. Then hover over a clip until you see the yellow replace symbol. Drop the clip, and a pop-up menu will appear allowing you to choose the possible outcomes. Choose what works best depending on the length of the source clip and whether you are in insert or overwrite mode. Another important piece of this system is linking. Clip linking is useful for keeping the sync relationships between B-roll, sound effects, and titles with clips on the main track. Remember, tracks above and below the main track are your overlay and audio tracks. When the clips on your overlay and audio tracks are linked to clips on your main track, you don't have to worry about shifting sync when making changes to earlier parts of the timeline. And, when you perform edits on the main track, such as adding clips, moving clips, or deleting clips, the clips on your overlay and audio tracks will remain linked at the frame where you placed them originally. Remember, by default, clips added above and below the main track will be linked to the clip on the main track at that timestamp, and the links are indicated by the small white link line at the first frame of each clip on the overlay and audio tracks. In order to get a link, there must be a clip on the main track to link to. 
There may be moments during editing when you need to unlink clips. Say I want this logo to appear at this exact time in my video, and I don't want it to be shifted when I make changes on the main track. So with the clip already selected, tap the unlink button to unlink that selected clip on the overlay track. Now my logo clip will not be shifted from that moment. You can also select a clip on the main track, then tap the unlink button. Notice how all the clips above and below the selected main track clip are now unlinked. If you want to relink a clip, select an unlinked clip on an overlay or audio track, then tap the relink button. Now this clip is linked to the clip on the main track. The same is also true if you want to relink by selecting an unlinked clip on the main track. Sometimes you may need to link or unlink multiple clips at once. Tap the multi-select button. With this activated, you can select more than one clip. From here, you can link and unlink multiple clips at a time. Keep in mind, when you remove a clip on the main track that has other clips linked to it, those linked clips will be removed as well. Okay, what if you want an entire track of clips to be unlinked without selecting them? In your track header panel, tap the unlink button that's associated with the track your clips are on. Now all the clips on that track are unlinked. Any new clips added to this unlinked track will also be unlinked. So if you want to relink all of the clips on the track, be sure to toggle linking back on by tapping the link button for the same track. And that wraps up part one of our deep dive into LumaFusion's enhanced magnetic timeline. In part two, we're going to build out some example workflows to show you how versatile these tools are. So stay tuned. Thanks for using LumaFusion and happy editing.